Well, hello, and welcome back to my second video in my series of homeschooling videos. If you're new here, my name is Diana, and I am a homeschooling mom of three. I am a travel blogger that shares all about family travel, but because of COVID, uh, we're not traveling right now. And so I am sharing all about our homeschool lifestyle, what works for us, where my girls thrive, why we love homeschooling so much. So of course, because of the pandemic and the way things are coming up for the new school year, I have got a ton of questions asking about how our homeschool works. And so that's how these videos started. I need to share a little bit of our homeschooling life with hopes that it will help you on your homeschooling journey. So if you are new here, I would love if you subscribed to my channel. You will find more homeschooling videos coming up, curriculum reviews, day in the life, all sorts of fun homeschooling goodies. Also, if you want to get notified every time I upload a video, which I am aiming to do once a week, uh, hit that little notification bell and be sure to follow me on Instagram where you will see more of our day in the life type videos on stories as well as inspirational style posts on my feed. So this video is going to be all about math. Math was one of those things was a little tricky when I was picking curriculum because I know a lot of people don't like math and math kind of gets this bad reputation. And I really liked math in school, so I wanted my girls to love math. Um, and to be honest, it was tricky starting out. The first few curriculums that we picked did not work at all. So this kind of sent me on this journey to find a curriculum that really worked for my daughter's learning style. So my oldest is going into second grade this year. Last year, we started off with a curriculum that did not work and about two or three months in, I decided to ditch that curriculum and we started with the good and the beautiful, which is what we're gonna be using again this year. So I'm gonna show you inside this workbook. This is math two for my second grader. It's actually broken down into two books. So this is part one and I'm gonna flip through it with you and show you the things that I love about this curriculum, show you things you need to know before purchasing this curriculum, what this curriculum includes and little tips and pieces of advice that I think you should know when using the good and the beautiful curriculum. So like I said, this is math two, and we use this for my daughter going into second grade. Uh, this is the first course book of two. And I'm just gonna open up this book and show you the inside because I think this is really helpful in determining if this is a good fit for you and what's included in this curriculum. Before starting any curriculum, you want to go onto the Good and the Beautiful's website and take their assessment. This is gonna give you a really good idea of what level your child is at. And I'll leave a link to where you can find that assessment in um, the description box below. But as you can see here, these are the course prerequisites. So this is really what your child should know before going into this course. Um, and this is for second grade, like I said before. I also have a daughter in first grade and a daughter in kindergarten. So I'll pull out those books later on and show you the prerequisites for those levels as well. And then here, um, these are gonna show you the course objectives. So this is what your child's going to learn um, this year in second grade. Now, I know some of you are just starting out homeschooling and it's circumstantial because of COVID and everything going on with that. And I get a lot of questions over on Instagram about transitioning your children back into public school. So if you look at your state's requirements and guidelines for let's say second grade or whatever grade your child's in, you can compare it with this scope of work to make sure that they're pretty much on the same level. Um, what I would keep in mind though, is that this year is unique and every child is going to be having a totally different experience. So as long as your child is learning, that's what's important. Overall, I'm really impressed with the scope and sequence of the Good and the Beautiful um, math curriculum for all levels. Even my daughter's kindergarten curriculum is fantastic. I can't believe how much they learned just in kindergarten. You can see here they have a number recognition, uh, geometry, algebra, patterns, graphing, and then it continues over here and they're learning time and money as well. In this course, uh, this is everything that is included. Okay, so you have the two course books up here, you have the planner, 
which I'll flip through a little later in the video. And then you have the activity box. Now, if you did the Good and the Beautiful last year for first grade, you can use the exact same activity box. It works for first and second grade. This also includes transition lessons. So if you have a child who is going into second grade, but maybe they're not quite meeting all of the requirements they needed for this level, they can go and download the transition lessons to get them ready. Um, so that's a great thing if you wanted to start in the summer. Also the level two answer key. I haven't needed the answer key for kindergarten or first grade, but who knows for second grade if I'll need it or not, uh, but it is available to you. And then these are all the things that are included in the activity box. I loved having the activity box and pre-purchasing the activity box because it really speaks to this idea of open and go. I had everything I needed for the lesson. I didn't need to prepare in any way because I had everything in the activity box ready. So I wasn't worried, did I need to make an extra trip to the store to pick up something that we would need for a particular lesson? Everything was there. Um, and this is, this section here goes over any additional things that you might need. So you can see it's pretty easy. Here, it's going to go over a basic math routine. So what it's going to look like daily for your child when they're completing a lesson. It starts with a daily dose, and then you have a lesson, which is about 15 to 20 minutes, and then your student worksheet, which they can work on independently. Now, there also is a bonus activity. Uh, last year in first grade, we would skip this sometimes if I felt like it was going over something or redundant, um, but I do use this in a unique way, and I'll explain later on in the video. Next, I'm gonna show you a lesson so you can get an idea what it looks like. What I love about the Good and the Beautiful Math curriculum is it really caters to a lot of different learning styles. So I have a daughter who's a kinesthetic learner, so likes hands-on learning, and then I have a daughter who's an auditory learner. So you can see here, this is the, this is the beginning of section one uh, in the first lesson. It starts with a little story. So that really works for my daughter who's an auditory learner because I read her the story and she's able to grasp concepts through storytelling. Now here in the lesson, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how the lesson is broken down. This is the daily dose. Now this one is actually quite long because it's the very first lesson of the entire book. So it's gonna go over what the child can expect in depth and teach the concepts from the beginning. So for me, especially for my daughter going into second grade, my hope is that this daily dose would be done independently. Um, and so I'm gonna, in the first few lessons, work with her to make sure that she can fully comprehend how to do the daily dose on her own. And then moving forward, I would say when we get to about lesson five or six, I'm gonna expect her to then work on the daily dose independently, which takes about five minutes. And then I will come in after and review that with her. This gives me the opportunity to work with her sisters during that time and getting them set up on their math lessons as well. And then here's the lesson. So you'll sit with your child and work through the lesson. If you're new to homeschooling, this is a really, really great curriculum. Like I said before, it's very open and go. And what I mean by that is that you can literally open up the book to the lesson and start. You really don't need to prepare. You really don't need to read a teacher's manual. Everything is there for you. And let me show you. So here, it's gonna show you what you need to pull out. So you need to go in your math activity box and pull out this mat and you need these supplies, and these are the pages from the appendix that you need. Then it's gonna tell you, read, paper route. Then you go through. In the blue is the instruction to the teacher, so place the wrought iron fence illustration in front of the child. And then in black is actually what you read to the child. There's no guessing here. You know exactly what to do, exactly what to say, exactly what to read. You can go off script if you want. You could read specifically right from the book if you want. It's completely up to you, but it is very detailed and very specific what you need to teach if you want to rely on the curriculum like that. And then it'll just keep going through. And then you'll get here. This is the optional activity. And then for this particular lesson, um, the student worksheet and the bonus independent activity is on the next page. Now, what I love about the Good and the Beautiful curriculum is that within the book, there are these optional activities. So sometimes there'll be nature activities. This one was an art lesson that my girls loved. They spent a lot of time on this. And so it makes it really easy for me as their teacher because everything is there for me. Um, and I find that it makes the curriculum very engaging. It's a very rich curriculum um, that's not so cut and dry math. So here's the next lesson. And I just kind of want to show you how the flow of this would go 
with my own daughter. Since I'm teaching three, this is kind of how the flow would go in regards to our math lesson. So for my oldest, I would have her open up her math book. And I know at this point, let's say we're further on in the curriculum, um, she was capable of doing the daily dose on her own. So I would ask her to get started on, on the daily dose while I got her other two sisters started. And then once she completed the daily dose, she would call me over and then we would work on the lesson together. Now, let's say I wasn't able to start with her when she was done with the daily dose um, because these the daily dose is a review, so she can sometimes move really, really quickly. For her, she knows that if I'm not ready to come and help her, if I'm still working with her other two younger sisters, that she would then move to the bonus activity. So the bonus activity are generally things that they can work independently on. Um, and so that's what she'll do. So we don't always do the bonus activity, but the bonus activity I find really useful for when I need a little bit more time and my daughter needs to work independently. So, you know, she'll go out and pull the materials that she needs. It does help because she can read, so she knows to read the instruction. Um, and so she'll go and pull the materials out of the activity box and be able to work independently until I'm able to come back and work on a lesson with her. And then I would say it's about 10 or 15 minutes, depending on the difficulty of the lesson. Um, it could be a little bit more. And then she'll work independently again on her student worksheet. So in total, I'm finding that my girls are spending about 20 to 25 minutes per lesson. And I'm just gonna flip through here so you can kind of get an idea of the feel of the book, how beautiful it really is, how colorful, colorful, how many engaging games there are. Um, and I'm also gonna show you the activity box so you get an idea of what's included in that. So here's the weekly planner for level two. Um, I We have just started using it because we just started with our curriculum this week, but I just kind of want to show you what it looks like. Um, what I found really interesting about the level two versus the level one last year is the planner is really meant to be worked on independently. So you're giving your child a lot of freedom to fill in um, what they want to versus level one where I was really working with my child to teach them about filling in the calendar and to teach them about creating uh, daily and weekly plans. So love that um, within the weekly plans, there are little poems, little tidbits of info um, that really cater to the month that they're in. So this is where we keep our curriculum um, in this storage container. And what I love about it is that each of um, the subjects have their own little compartment, that lock you can see here. So if we wanted to take our lessons outside or on the go, we could do that. Um, and so I'm gonna go through some of the pieces in here. It's actually divided up between my second grader and my first grader. So not all of the pieces from the activity box are in this particular box here, um, but I'm gonna go through and show you so you can get an idea of what's included. Like I said before, one of the things I love about the Good and the Beautiful curriculum is that it is packed full of games. And this is the game instruction book, um, and it goes over all of the games that are included in the activity box and how to play them. Uh, and not only how to play them, but how to play them in a way that's challenging for the level that your child is on. So you'll have instructions in your lessons that tell you, okay, you can play Castle Tours version number two because that's what your child's working on at that particular moment. So even with the games, you don't have to guess. Uh, it's actually worked into the lessons for you. And here are a few more of the manipulatives and activities included in the box. Um, and you can see there's a variety of different things and these are all incorporated into your lessons. So you have like the base 10 bricks, you have different themed manipulatives based on what you're learning in the lesson. Um, you have a clock, place value chart, and yeah. So we're really, really happy with how many different manipulatives there are. It makes it very captivating and engaging for my girls and it actually makes them love doing their math lesson. And here is the at a glance for level one. So you have your course prerequisites here. Like I said earlier in the video, you can find out if your child is ready for level one by taking the assessment on thegoodandthebeautiful.com. I will link that 
uh, in the description below. Um, and then also the course objectives here so you can see what they will be learning in level one. And last but not least, my daughter's kindergarten at a glance. So this is everything that they would need to know before starting this particular curriculum. Um, I love this kindergarten curriculum. I find it to be very, very gentle, um, but they learn so, so much. I was so surprised. Um, last year I had a kindergartner and she, I just was shocked at all she was learning. So this gives you an idea of what they're gonna be learning. You have patterns, geometry, time, length, money, graphing, and then memorizing one phone number. So here is book two for my daughter's first grade math curriculum. And the reason I'm pulling out book two is because I wanna actually show you the end um, because this curriculum does include an assessment. So I was getting a few questions from the new homeschooling moms about how you gauge how much your child has learned. Um, and so I kind of wanted to show you that. So at the end of each section, um, there's gonna be an assessment to make sure that your child is prepared to move on to the next section. So it's not just at the end that you're assessing your child's development. You'll be able to do that all throughout the curriculum. So this gives you an idea of the last section assessment for first grade. And then they do actually do something fun. They have like a math facts game day, kind of as like the last day of school. Um, so this is the final assessment for level one, just so you can get an idea of everything they're gonna be learning um, in this course and um, what they're going to be tested on at the end. Well, there you have it. There is my full breakdown of the Good and the Beautiful math curriculum. Like I said before, we're gonna be using it for my second grader, my first grader, and my kindergartner. I hope this flip through was really helpful for you, but if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will get to them as quickly as I can. And if you wanna see more of our daily life, uh, then come over and visit me on Instagram because that's where I share what our day-to-day -day looks like. So if you wanna see a real math lesson in action, then come over and watch our stories because we share that over there all the time. I hope you subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment letting me know what else you wanna know about curriculum or homeschool life, and I might include that in my next video.